Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Tuckaway Pines. Today is a big day for us. We are getting ready to go head out to our local orchard and pick up our apple trees. Um, we actually ordered two varieties of uh, apple trees, two varieties of elderberry bushes, and then two varieties of asparagus crowns. So we're going to get ready, go pick those up, and then bring them back and put them in the ground. season like if they'll be getting more of the same plants that they all right we're back with our apple trees I got them soaking in buckets of water right now so we can dig the holes and get them ready to go home in their permanent spots um, but yeah we got two types of apple trees and then we got two types of elderberry plants right there in the little baggie and then actually that little bag and that little bag, or those two bags right there, <laughs> there are um, asparagus crowns. So we got two types of asparagus, two types of elderberries, and then two types of apple trees. And um, we got everything kind of mapped out as far as where we want them to go in the general yard and stuff. Um, and uh, we're gonna start get ready, uh, getting ready to dig our holes. Okay, so this is our first variety of apple tree that we got, and it's called the Enterprise apple tree. Um, it's actually a semi-dwarf, so it'll only grow about 12 to 15 feet, and um, it'll take maybe a year or two, maybe three, to, you know, produce anything that we can, you know, really enjoy. But um, it's really exciting. We plan to build it here in our front yard, actually. As you can see, we're getting really good sunlight. And it's still like in the morning, you know, it's not even afternoon yet. So I don't know, around 10, 11 right now. So um, yeah, and it'll get sunlight like this for most of the day. So that's really good. Um, you can see behind me, uh, there's actually a shovel in the ground. That's probably around. That's uh, where it's gonna go. This is actually in our front yard. At, um, and right where that spot is, there used to be a planter. You can kind of see the pile of wood behind me. That was an old planter that was here before we moved in and it's been here for a really long time because it started rotting in place and we just needed to get rid of it so we'll replace it with a nice apple tree and hopefully in a few years we'll have really delicious apples. <laughs> the second variety of apple tree that we got is called the Wolf River apple tree. Um, it's actually standard so this one's gonna grow full length um, about I don't know 20 to 30 feet tall and we plan on growing this here in this general vicinity. This is kind of on the back side of our uh, backyard. There's a lot more space for it to kind of obviously grow up but branch out. And you can also kind of see there's really good sunlight, you know, all day. Actually, this spot would probably get the most sunlight throughout the day. Um, nothing's really blocking it, won't cast any shadows. Or anything like that so this tree I feel like will do really really good right here and it won't necessarily be in our way you know as far as you know driving through because this is kind of you can kind of see a pathway you know a high traffic area if you will for the on the property just to get around and stuff so but uh, yeah and again this one will uh, take a few years to you know mature enough to start producing anything so We'll just have to wait, but this is definitely really exciting for us, and it's only the start, I'll tell you that right now. Um, but uh, yeah, and I didn't, I don't know if I mentioned it with the other one, but both of these varieties are good, are very hardy through um, zones 4 through 7, and um, which we're in zone 4, I think 4B to be more specific. Um, and uh, yeah, especially with all the snow that we've had last year, and if it's going to be like that up here, um, we need some really hardy plants, so, um, but yeah, so that's a little bit about that and where we're going to plant that. Um, I want to show you our elderberry bushes next and show you where those are going to go. So, let's go. These are our elderberries. This is how we got them in these cute little, uh, pots and you can see they're good, good starts. Um, there are two different varieties here. I have a Nova elderberry and then a Ranch elderberry. Um, 
We plan on growing them kind of right behind me here in this little opening. Um, kind of move these uh, little logs and stuff. But uh, yeah, I think this would be a good kind of like a patch or start of an elderberry patch, if you will. It's kind of right on the edge of our tree line on the side of our house. So we kind of want to have things sort of spread out, if you haven't noticed. Um, just kind of so nothing's too clustered somewhere or congested. So, and I'd hate to have to dig something up again to move it somewhere else. So I'm trying to find these, the best place possible for these things. Um, but yeah, it is a little shaded here, which I don't think will be a big deal. I mean, yeah, they prefer full sun, but they can tolerate some partial shade. And um, being something that we have noticed is how intense the sun can get. Um, it might be a little benefit for these, especially when they first start out. Um, but yeah, in the morning time, they do get really good sunlight. And then I believe a little later in the afternoon, they'll get a little bit more sunshine. So it's um, it's something that I'm pretty sure they can handle. So we'll see. <laughs> if not, we'll, we'll have to try again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so here's our two elderberry um, bushes. And um, I'm hoping, I would think probably in the next maybe year or so, year or two, um, they'll start producing pretty good. We'll see. Um, I guess it depends on how good they grow and no setbacks. I actually have to put something around these, like some chicken wire, so the bunnies don't get to them because we have a healthy population of bunnies here. And there's actually a couple other plants I need to do that too because um, I've noticed some nibbles on these plants and I don't want those to get stunted. So, so yeah, here's our elderberries. This is where they're going to go. Um, and the last thing I want to show you is our asparagus and where are they going to go? Okay, so last but not least is our asparagus crowns. Um, we got six crowns, I believe, in each bag. We got two different varieties again for these. Um, one is a Jersey Knight, which will, um, that's a green asparagus because we also got a purple asparagus. But um, for the Jersey Knights, it'll take a little longer for them to kind of get going. I guess um, from what we were told, I believe like the first year or two, they'll kind of grow like a little, it was described as a wispy little like leaf or whatever, almost resembling a fern maybe. Um, but uh, that is uh, the start of the asparagus and then it'll start kicking off shoots, edible spears um, in the next, af after the first like what, three, two, three years or so. Um, so yeah, and uh, to keep them heavily weeded, um, make sure no weeds are suffocating them, especially when it comes to the wispy fern looking plant because you don't want to mistake that as uh, a weed and pull it and don't have asparagus anymore. So. And to keep them marked because having them buried under the ground for, you know, so long, you might forget where they are, might lose track, might, I don't know, like I said, mistake it for something else. And so, yeah, that's what we were told. And then our second variety that we got is called a Purple Passion. So, as the name states, and like I said, it is a purple asparagus. I don't know, I like different colored vegetables and kind of like to try it. So, we got one of those, well, six grounds of those. And um, these actually should produce some edible spears rather quickly. We were told within like the first year. I don't know if this year, as of planting them, we'll get anything. But as of next year, for sure, we'll definitely get some asparagus spears. And as far as we're, where we are going to put them, we are actually going to put them behind me. You can kind of see some hyacinths. And, uh, we got tulips. It's kind of like a little, um, you know, perennial garden. And um, I was thinking maybe just sprinkling some of the crowns kind of along the edges or along the, the edge line there. Um, I think that would be kind of neat, you know multi-function and these are a perennial as long as we don't kill them so <laughs> um, yeah I thought that was a good spot and you can see now the sun's out on this side of the yard this is kind of like the side back of our yard actually not too far from our Wolf River apple tree so kind of that same zone but uh, yeah I think this will be a cool spot for them now we just got to start digging <laughs>
Okay, so I have my hole dug. It's about uh, about a foot deep, not too deep, but uh, deep enough to where all the roots fit down in the hole. And actually, our um, orchard lady, <laughs> she uh, told us that something interesting that um, so. If you want to plant an apple tree per se, you can't necessarily just take a seed from an apple because you won't get the true variety. Um, you'll get that variety that the apple came off of and whatever else it was pollinated with because apple trees need to be pollinated off of each other if they are a different variety in order to produce, hence why we got two different types. But um, so they graft, they'll take like, I guess, like a, a little slice of a tree and they'll graft it or attach it to like um, a root stock and that will take over and grow as that specific variety because that's where it came from. So she said when you plant them in the ground you obviously want to cover the roots but then you want to plant them um, right below maybe about an inch or two below the graft that way um, because once it's buried, that graft will shoot out roots instead of the actual um, tree itself. Because you could plant, you know, have the dirt over the graft, but um, then it's going to start shooting out roots from the tree instead of the stock, the root stock. So it was a little interesting. I had no idea that was even a thing. So uh, really cool. And then she also gave us um, some inoculator. Um, so we'll sprinkle some of this in the hole and then put the tree in. That way, um, this stuff is just to like help uh, kind of kickstart the roots and all that, the whole plant itself, because these were, these are obviously their bare root trees, which is super cool. I like that. And um, they were taken once, once you know, fall came and winter came, they were, you know, harvested or what have that, whatever they do to, you know, get ready to sell them. So they kind of were dormant and in that hibernation stage and they've been in cold storage since. So now since it's springtime and we're planting them, we want to use this inoculator to kind of kickstart the root system and get all that good uh, tree juices flowing. So uh, yeah, um, I think that's pretty much it. I do want to point out the graft to you guys in case anyone doesn't you know, know anything about that, which I didn't. I thought it was actually kind of interesting. So that'll be another topic on the to-do list to learn in the future here. <laughs> Want to learn about so much, so much stuff out here. So, but yeah, let me show you that, and uh, we'll get this baby in the ground. Okay, so like I said, I wanted to point out the graft. You see, um, right here, it kind of looks like a knot per se. That's where the rootstock begins down here. And then up here is where the actual tree was grafted to the stock. And it'll basically kind of live off of this and do its thing. So, which, yeah, it's kind of neat. Didn't know that's how, like, apple trees and a lot of other trees were, like, made. So, the more you know, guys. Any rocks that we find while we dig, we try to save them. We like to make little rock pathways and stuff like that for yard decoration. But um, so I'm getting ready to plant my semi dwarf enterprise apple tree. I'm just gonna size it up, make sure it fits in here nicely, and I think it will. That graph right here, it's gonna be exposed just the right amount, so that's fine. And then. I'm going to put in some of that inoculator. Just sprinkle a little in, nothing too crazy, and I want to save some for the other apple tree as well. Putting the apple tree in the hole now. And I gotta sprinkle some dirt in. Let's see which way we want it to face.
Alrighty, here we are, our first tree in, the Enterprise. Again, this is our uh, semi-dwarf. And um, yeah, it looks really good, super excited. Um, I'm just gonna throw some of the water that was in the bucket that it was in. I'm just gonna kind of water it a little. And then we're gonna move on to our next apple tree. So we just finished planting our Wolf River apple tree. This is the standard one, so it's going to grow full size, about 20 to 30 feet or so. But um, what I didn't mention at the other tree was we got these tree guards with the trees as well. And typically you don't put these on until like around fall time, but since we have a lot of rabbits and I don't know if the deer are going to take a liking to them, so I just figured I'd put them on now. That way, just better safe than sorry. And also since it's planted right below the graft, I have that covered as well just to ensure uh, the integrity of the tree itself. And also, um, I didn't do this with the first tree and I thought about it right as soon as I was done, you know, covering it all up. But um, with this one here, we had some uh, composted manure we got from a local farmer. And um, I decided to mix some manure in here as well along with the um, inoculator as with that as well. So maybe give it a little extra boost um, but with the uh, the semi-dwarf tree I'm thinking to kind of make up for the lack of compost in there I'll make a compost tea and just kind of water it with that just to supplement it a little bit there so yeah that is that for our apple trees and I think next I'm just gonna move on next door and start planting asparagus crowns Okay, so where I'm planting the asparagus is kind of on the side and on our side yard here, and it's in our perennial garden. And um, I dug a little trench, a trench if you will. It's about um, I don't know three feet wide, uh, or three feet long by maybe six inches wide. Um, I have about six crowns here, and they kind of look like a bunch of tentacles. I don't know, <laughs> um, but. This is, um, this is the root system of the crown, and the crown's this very top here. Um, but I'm just going to put them in like this. We were told that we could trim them if we wanted to. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to let them do their thing. And actually, this variety is our green variety, the Jersey Knights. So this stuff is going to take a little while to, you know, establish itself before we actually get the spears. But... That being said, I'm just going to pop them in the ground. And I think I'm going to try and, like, obviously space them out, but kind of stagger them. So maybe have one towards the back of the trench and then one towards the front of the trench. So that way they, they're they not as tight on each other. Because I know this is kind of like a little small stretch, but it should be perfect for these little guys. So put them in the ground. And I also grabbed some more manure as well. That I'm going to kind of sprinkle with because I'm not going to use the inoculator for this stuff. I wasn't really recommended to, only for the trees. So I'm just going to kind of give them a little bit of manure and uh, call it a day. And when you are planting these crowns, you don't want to have them buried too deep. You want to just basically kind of dust the crown part, the top, with just some soil and then have it, um, you know, kind of weed free. So I'm gonna go over this with a fresh thing of mulch. And then I think I'll make a little tag to remind me that this is where it is. And this is the type of variety that we have as well. And as far as mulching goes, I think I'm gonna go back and mulch the trees as well, just so you guys are aware. Okay, so these are the purple passions. So these are the purple asparagus crowns. And again, I have six of them. And again, I dug my little trench here. And I'm just gonna stagger them like one up front or one in the back and then one kind of front and just kind of zigzag them through. But before I put them in, I want to add a little bit of a composted manure. Just a nice, like, base layer. And then, you can kind of position them in. And it's kind of easy. You just kind of lay them generally how you want. And then when you start adding the dirt, you can kind of fine-tune their positioning. 
but just kind of lay them in the in the trench you know let their uh, roots kind of spread across this one I think is since it's a little thicker and bigger I'm gonna put it in the middle this one's a little thinner so I'll move that here and then I'll move this one kind of on the end since it's not as big and then what I'm going to do is add just another dusting of manure. Okay, and then I'm just going to bury them in. I'm going to start with just some handfuls just so I can ease it in and kind of direct the crowns how I want them to stand. You know, I'll put some dirt behind them. That way they're able to kind of not lean against the trench wall, if you will. See how it kind of stands up now since I've got it kind of perched and supported? That way it'll grow that way. So I have my asparagus crowns pretty much buried in here. You can kind of see the crowns are still poking out a little bit. Um, what we want to have is just them lightly covered. You don't want to bury them super deep. Just maybe, I don't know, a quarter inch of soil just right above them. That way, when it's time, it can poke right through. Right where uh, I want to plant my elderberries and um, we got the hole, I already dug the holes and they're about, I don't know, 10 to 12 feet apart actually, which is kind of nice because that'll give them the space to where they don't feel like they need to compete and they can actually bush out like they're meant to instead of turning into like small trees. So um, yeah. And our, we have two different varieties. This one right here is the Nova variety of elderberry. And then I have another variety called the Ranch. Um, the holes, I didn't have dug too deep, maybe like five inches deep. I could probably add a little more soil in here. Um, I actually am going to add some manure just to give it that little boost. But um, they come in these cute little tubes and really I could... The instructions recommend cutting the two, but it's like a plastic and I don't want to sit here and mess around. I feel like that would cause more stress and struggle than just, you know, kind of loosening everything. You can squeeze them really easily and I can uh, kind of pull it out. And really, that's pretty much it. Just a little cutting and it's got some roots started. So that's neat. And we were um, told to kind of bury it maybe like this. So that way it can send out more offshoots for roots. And uh, actually, I'm probably, when I'm done here, I'm probably going to go, well, first of all, make some little tags so I don't forget the names of these. Same with the asparagus. But then I also want to maybe put some chicken wire around this because I don't want the bunnies nibbling on these cute little sweet green leaves. <laughs> but, so... Like I said, I'm going to throw some uh, manure in here. Just a nice little base layer. And uh, there's some soil in here, so I'm just going to kind of get that out. Because that's what the plant's used to. Free up the tube. And then stick my little guy in here. Some very in here. And I'll probably mulch this too, that way it helps kind of not only keep them, you know, weed free and insulated, but also helps hold that moisture. And also to um, help me remember a little bit more that something is here. <laughs> because being this young, they can kind of get lost in the other green stuff. So, but there we go, that's one elderberry plant. I'm gonna move that out of the way. 
right, there's one. On to the next. Okay, I just wanted to show you a cute little thing. I actually forgot I had these. Um, back when we lived in Milwaukee, I had some spare tomato cages and I ended up um, cutting one in half and surrounding it with chicken wire. That way I can just use it as like a makeshift little cage to protect any little plants that I want to keep safe from the bunnies and stuff. And this is what it looks like. It's kind of neat. This is uh, how I said I wanted a chicken wire around the elderberry. So this saves me so much time having to put out steaks and unwrap the chicken wire and go all around it and stuff. So. Yeah, I actually, this reminds me, I need to make more of these because these come in handy and I'm going to need a bunch. So if you guys have any spare tomato cages or see any of them, pick them up and do this because this will save you so much time uh, when it comes to protecting all the little plants that we need to protect. Um, and yeah, the other one, that's the bottom half of the tomato cage over there. So it's a little bigger, a little wider, but that's okay. Still plenty of room to grow and be nice and safe. So... Yeah, I just want to show you guys that real quick, and um, that's pretty much it for today. We planted our two apple trees, two varieties of asparagus, and our two varieties of elderberry. And actually, there is going to be some more planting going on, maybe tomorrow, um, depending on time, just with the way things are going, because there's we're in the planting rush. There's stuff outside that needs, or inside that needs to come outside. We got tons of plants and pots that we just bought that we need to get in the ground ASAP and uh, it's kind of hectic so but I'll uh, keep you guys updated as far as that goes um, I hope everyone enjoyed our little um, orchard pickup video and planting it's really exciting for us because this is food that will you know feed us for several years to come I mean I know we'll have to wait a couple of years for it but it'll just be the gift that keeps on giving so um, again, I hope everyone enjoyed. Thank you guys for coming along with us and watching the whole process and the journey of it all. Um, please give us a like. Um, please comment um, if you guys have any sort of um, fruit trees, fruit bushes, anything like that. Because I'd be really interesting, uh, interested in hearing what everyone else has, what they use that stuff for. And um, yeah, just kind of seeing where everyone else is at. Because... Everyone's situation's a little different. Everyone um, likes different things and stuff. And I'm always willing to try new stuff, especially being new at this. So keeping an open mind. But anyway, again, I hope you guys enjoyed. And please don't forget to subscribe on the way out so you don't miss out on any other fun stuff that we do here on the homestead. <gasps> All right, you guys. Have a great night. Thanks again. Bye.